Welcome to our online community. We do pray that wherever you are listening from, that you're able to take the time to sit still and hear from God's Word today. We come to you from Highlands Presbyterian Church. We also ask that you give us feedback on our online services. Enjoy the message for today. Morning, everyone. When Jesus had uh, cast out the demons from the demon-possessed man in the tomb, the man went to Jesus, wanting to go with him. And from Mark, verse, Mark chapter 5, verse 19, we hear, And he did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. What keeps the majority of Christians silent when it comes to sharing Jesus? Fear of rejection? Fear of not knowing what to say? Fear of what people might think of me? Fear of losing my friends and relatives? Fear of the potential problems that might arise? if I stand boldly for Jesus? If fear of others is the number one reason we don't share our faith in Christ, how can that obstacle be overcome? Some interesting statistics. 65% of Christians are willing to talk about spiritual matters with other Christians, while only 30% of Christians are willing to talk about spiritual matters with non-believers. There's a statement that was made that says, 95% of all Christians have never led another person to faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to refute that statement. I say 100% of Christians have never led another person to faith in Jesus Christ. You ask, what do, what do you mean by that? What I mean is that the Holy Spirit is the soul winner. We have the privilege of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with everyone, but only the Holy Spirit can bring someone out of spiritual death to a new new life in Jesus Christ. You never fail when you witness. The only failure is being disobedient to God. As he gives you the opportunity to share, God is not going to disown you and reject you because you failed to maximize that opportunity to share. You never fail if someone turns down Christ. Don't take it personally if they turn down Jesus. It's him they are rejecting, not you. Jesus preached the good news and he is God. Not everyone received his message. In John 1 verse 11, it says, he came to his own and those who were his own did not receive him. Just because they didn't receive him, didn't stop him from proclaiming the good news. It's normal to have some fear when it comes to sharing your faith in Christ with others. However, none of us get an excuse card from God saying, because my child is fearful, they are excused from sharing my great news of salvation with their family and friends. 1 Peter 3.14, as we heard, says, do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. John 14 verse 1 tells us, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You are normal if you get a little apprehensive when it comes to sharing your faith. Remember, that's part of it. You begin to overcome fear by obeying God and believing in his truth. Paul tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8, So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. When I went to Dallas, Texas to attend the Gideon's International Convention, at lunchtime each day, we were given the opportunity of going down into the streets of downtown Dallas to share our faith with others 
and win people to Christ. When I heard this, I was very apprehensive. And I thought to myself, they must be crazy. Me, a Zimbabwean, I'm going to go and talk to people on the streets of Dallas about Jesus? I thought I would graciously decline the suggestion as it was optional to go or not. However, a fellow Gideon from Scotland encouraged me to join him. As he said, we'll see a little of Dallas as we're going to the train station by bus. So we equipped ourselves with a few little testaments such as these, and off we went. I was extremely nervous. While we were on the streets, down in, in Dallas, we began to share our faith in Jesus Christ and share the good news of Jesus with those around us. Some people were happy and open to receiving the good message of Jesus, but others flatly rejected us and rebuked us. Can you imagine a Scotsman and a Zimbabwean on the streets of Dallas sharing the gospel message with Texans and Hispanic Americans. Looking back, I'm glad he invited me to share my faith with the people of Dallas. Stepping out like this made me pray more, use the scriptures better, and affirm my faith in Jesus Christ as Lord. I was constantly praying as we were talking to people in my heart. I was able to chat with people I had never met before and I learned to love people better regardless of their faith. Do I struggle with fear in sharing my faith with Jesus Christ to this day? The answer is yes, I probably always will have a little fear. However, I'm not going to let my fear stop me from obeying God. We can seek the Lord and he will always help us to overcome our fear as we trust in him. The second point I raise is keep your eyes on Jesus. From this, the verse that we, we heard this morning, 3.15, it says, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. To set apart Christ as Lord of our lives is simply to recognize the greatness of who he is and allow him to live and work through us. In Hebrews 12, verses one to three, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run the, with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set out before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You may ask, what does this have to do when it comes to sharing Jesus with my friends and family? You can stop struggling to get them to accept Jesus in your timing. It is all in God's timing. Jesus is the Lord. You can stop struggling in your own efforts to win them to Christ, because it is not you, it is Jesus who wins them. He is the Lord. You can remember that God is the one that draws them, not you. Jesus is in control. The most frustrated Christian is the one who is trying to do the work of the Lord instead of allowing the Lord of the work to work through them. Colossians 1, verses 28 and 20, 28 and 29 says, he is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Doing God's work is not about our power and might, but God's power and might. Think of the disciples toiling all night for fish and catching nothing in Luke 5. And yet they were willing to cast their nets on the other side of the boat because they knew the voice of the master. What are we learning from this? It's not about me, it's about him. 
So remember, before you share your faith of what Jesus has done for you and your life, rem remember to pray. Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, Do not be anxious about any anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 to 20, he tells us, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind. Be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an, amb an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Thirdly, we need to remember that there is a reward. In Larry Moyer's book, how to, how to Book on Personal Evangelism, he shares these four principles about evangelizing out of grace and not guilt. Evangelism is always approached in scripture as a privilege and not as a pain. God never asked anybody to bring the lost to Christ. He only asks us to bring Christ to the lost. God is not asking you to push through closed doors, simply walk through the open ones. The presence of fear does not mean the absence of love. What is your plan for sharing Jesus with others? Remember who you were before you encountered Christ. Remember how you received Christ as your Lord and Savior. Remember the difference Jesus is making in your life now and eternally. Remember that we are on mission with God to reach the world with a passion for God and a compassion for people. There's nothing more awesome than knowing and sharing Jesus with friends and family. There is a reward in knowing that you are obedient to God. There is a reward in knowing God is at work through you. There is a reward knowing your life is making an eternal difference. There is a reward knowing others will be included in God's family and not instead of, fate and instead of Satan's family. There is a reward in knowing you are an ambassador of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is a reward knowing you are a vessel of honor, alive to be useful to your master. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you on the cross, even while you were a sinner. Jesus was buried and rose on the third day. Jesus is alive forever and more. Are you wanting forgiveness for your sins? Are you willing to surrender your life to Christ? Are you ready to invite Jesus into your life and into your heart? Because Jesus lives, you will also live. Remember in Matthew 28, verses 18 and 19, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. What is your plan of sharing Jesus without fear? Remember these points. You are normal if you, if you fear. Always keep your eyes on Jesus. And remember, there is a great reward in, in sharing Jesus with others. Shall we pray? Lord and Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you give us the opportunity to be used by you to share your word with the world around us. Lord, I pray that you would give us the boldness so that we may speak the truth to others. And Lord, help us to realize that it is not about us, but all about you. Speak through us as we share your word with others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
We pray that you would have a great week knowing that God your Father is with you every step of the way.